One of the first things I learned about lithium batteries when I started to get involved in the setup and customization of them is always charge the battery before you install it in the vehicle, especially if there's other batteries involved. Um, I've been told that there's going to be a large rush of current due to the voltage difference. And well, today I wanted to put that to the test and see just how much. So um, I have spent some time wiring up a, just a simple relay. I'm going to discharge a headway bank, um, just eight amp hours for right now and hook it up to a completely charged, I mean, topped off 14 plus volts, glow voltage series one cell. Um, I'm gonna have a Bluetooth shunt in between them. That way I can monitor all the data. I'll be able to graph out the current and we'll be able to see just how much it matters. So is it going to pull a lot of current? Um, we're gonna find out. Okay, what I am working on draining these headways out. Uh, I was doing it pretty quick, but it got really hot here, so I slowed it down and just gonna wait till it begins to naturally fall. Um, after that, I will hook it up to this guy right here and flip the switch. And we will record what exactly happens between the completely discharged bank of headway cells and a fully charged GSB one, GDS one. Okay, so I'm checking the voltage at the headway cells. Um, they are sitting at 11.68 volts or 11.86. So I'm going to go ahead and hook it up to the other side. Um, so we have the, the GVS one. Now the grounds are hooked up through a shunt, so as soon as I give power to this relay, these two batteries are going to be hooked up. This 11 volt bank and um, the, the fully charged bank that is 14.21 volts. So I'm just going to um, hook up my power supply to this side and then get it grounded and then as soon as I press the button um, the relay will go and let's watch what happens so hopefully this doesn't burn all right here we go on three three Okay, so we started off at 95 amps. There was a 95 amp burst there, but we're down to 50, um, 45. And you can see we had it set to 100, even though it's only a 90 amp hour bank, but we can watch how much current has actually gone through. It's already dropped down to 23 amps. So we had, you know, a little bit of a surge there, but. So it wasn't really too bad. Um, We've only lost about an amp hour total so far from the primary battery going to the headways. Um, and that I believe is because the, the median voltage that they have is like 3.2 and it stays right around that area for almost the entire charge cycle. So. As soon as these things are any, as soon as these are anything but completely dead, their voltage jumps up. And then with a voltage difference between this and the fully charged cell, once it gets to like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 volts, um, based on Ohm's law, there's not going to be that much current that flows between them. So 
I mean, it still is, you know, it still is moving at about nine amp hours now, but that's nothing to like really be overly concerned about as far as the wiring. Now, the question is, is what happens if I have, say, a 4S, 4P bank here, because then I have a lot less resistance from these cells. Um, I suspect it'll actually up the current quite a bit, but I will test that in a future video. Um, I'm going to swing back by once this actually stops discharging and see where we end up. Okay. As a 10 minute update, we have looks like about 1.6 amp hours have been pulled total in 10 minutes and we are down to 3.3 amps of current flowing between um, the two cells or the two banks. So it's slowed down a, quite a bit from initially and now it's, um, I don't want to call it trickle charging because it's a little bit more than that, but a very small amount of current is flowing to it while it is regulating the voltages between the two banks. Okay, so we are now 30 minutes in, and it looks like the current has fallen to 1.2, and we're pulling about 3.25, so three, or sorry, two and a quarter amps have gone to this, so they're very slowly getting there. They're a little over a quarter way um, still, so. It's been about an hour and 20 minutes, and we are down to teetering between 0.5 and 0.6 amps of current. Um, we've drawn a little under three amp hours total at this point. And we will check back in a bit, but it's really died down. So I don't expect to see too much more of a transfer. And that's what happens if you hook up a discharge bank to a charge lithium bank. Hey guys, quick update. It's been about five hours, down to 0.1 amps. We have approximately four amp hours pulled from the larger bank into the headway bank. So these are about half charge now. I'm sitting at 13.28 volts. And yeah, we'll check it again in another few hours, see if it has stopped yet. All right guys, so it is about eight hours after starting and I'm finally not reading any amperage so I'm going to disconnect these and measure the voltage. Okay so with the disconnected at the primary bank it is 3.29 and it looks like all total we never crossed the halfway mark so I've had some time to get everything put together and this is what it looks like broken out graphically at the beginning here my battery was at 14.19 volts and as soon as I unisolated the batteries there's this big dip here uh, the maximum current was 95.3 amps, quickly drops to 82, quickly drops to 58, and within 60 seconds, we are below 20 amps of current. Was a pretty big spike, but subsided relatively quickly and continued dropping at a rapid pace. If we go to the overall view, looks a lot like you would expect... Um, Parallel balancing to any battery banks to be really, it slows down as the batteries get closer in voltage. You can thank Ohm's Law for that. You can see 0.1, 0.1, and when we stopped it, it was reading 0 0.0, but about every 30 seconds to a minute, it would flash 0.1. So there was likely very small amounts of current still flowing between the batteries, hundredths of a volt differences.
That likely would continue for days, possibly weeks, since the primary battery was nearly full and the headway was empty. When we ended it eight hours in, four amp hours had been transferred, so the headways were about half full. What I suspect, however, is that if we were to take a 2P bank of the headways or even a 4P bank of the headways, so like a 32 amp hour headway bank, we would see double, perhaps four times the current that we saw. So that's where the safety risk begins, I believe, is when you start getting into larger banks that you're adding, not necessarily the size of the bank that's already installed in your car. I'm going to test that. If you want to see, check out my channel in a few days. But it is important to note that you probably shouldn't be doing this yourself. Uh, I do have a fire extinguisher nearby that's just in case the 40AWG wire that I was using cooked, which thankfully it didn't even get close to that. Now I have a better idea of what to expect, but several precautions were taken, so don't just start hooking up batteries that are uncharged to make sure that they're charged before you put them in your car. That's it for now, so... If you have anything you would like to see in the future, just let me know and I will try to make a video on it. And on that note, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of my 11-year-old son's artwork. Have a good one, everyone.